after discussing uniform circular motion, now it's the time to uh, look at the case when the motion of an object moving in circular motion is not uniform. That means that if you look at the velocity vectors at two different points along the circle, those velocity vectors might have a different magnitude. So that means that the speed is not constant when you're talking about non-uniform circular motion. So in this kind of motion, the velocity changes in direction, just as it did in uniform circular motion, but the velocity also changes in magnitude. So when this is the case, how do you calculate the acceleration? So let's redraw that a little bigger. That's the vector v1, that's the vector v2 at a different point. We'll assume that we're exaggerating the distance between these two points, they're supposed to be close and v2 in this case is bigger in magnitude than v1. So if you look at, if you want to calculate the acceleration, you need to calculate the change in velocity. So to calculate the change in velocity, you move v2 so that its tail coincides with the tail of v1, and you draw the vector delta v going from the tail of, I mean from the head of v1 to the head of v2. So that's your delta v. Now let's try to use what uh, we've done before for the case of uniform circular motion is if the vector v2 in magnitude had not grown if the magnitude of v2 had been the same as the magnitude of v1 then the change in velocity vector will be given by this uh, yellow vector delta vc and it would point towards the center of the path if v1 is close to v2 if those two points are close together then delta vc would point towards the center and we will call that centripetal, the c means centripetal. But for non-uniform circular motion we know that the magnitude of the velocity is not the same. V2 magnitude is not the same as the magnitude of V1. So to the change in velocity vector, delta Vc, we need to add a second component which is the component that is going to be related to the fact that the magnitude of the velocity grew so this is the uh, component of the change in velocity that we're going to call the tangential component. So we denote it by delta Vt for tangential. So notice that the change in velocity vector, we can split it into two uh, components. Delta Vc is the uh, component of the change in velocity that has to do with the fact that the velocity vector is changing in direction because the object is moving in a circle. And then the second component is delta Vt, which is the part of the change in the velocity that has to do with the change in speed, the fact that the object, that the object's speed is changing. So the net or the overall, or the total change in velocity vector for non-uniform motion, we're going to break it into two pieces, one that is centripetal, one that is tangential. So the acceleration we can calculate it by taking the vector delta v and dividing it by delta t applying the limit when delta t goes to zero then the limit we can apply to both components the first gives us the centripetal acceleration is the component of the acceleration that points toward the center of the circle which is the direction in which delta vc points so that is our familiar centripetal acceleration the second term is the tangential acceleration. This is the component of the acceleration that is related to the change in speed of the object. The expression for the centripetal acceleration is minus v squared over r in the direction r hat and the expression for the tangential acceleration is simply dv dt where the v refers to the speed, the magnitude of the vector velocity and dv dt therefore is the change in speed of the object. So there will be a tangential component of the acceleration every time the speed of the object of an object moving in circular motion is changing. The direction of that acceleration we said is tangential so that direction can be specified by using a unitary vector v hat. It's a vector 
of unit magnitude that points in the direction of the velocity of the velocity at the instant in time where you're evaluating the acceleration let's do a diagram showing those different vectors so let's say that we have these velocity vectors at three different points at that point the acceleration vector might point in some direction in space and we know that that acceleration vector is going to have two components the centripetal acceleration component which would point towards the center of the path and it is related to the fact that the velocity vector is rotating, is changing direction and the second component is the one that we call tangential acceleration and we say that it goes along the direction or it points in the same direction as the vector velocity but that's only when the speed is increasing when dv dt is bigger than zero if dv dt was negative then the tangential acceleration we point in a direction that is exactly opposite to the direction of the velocity that's not the case that, uh, that we're illustrating here but that would be the case when the speed is decreasing 